Yo, what's up, AML family? We are here in the middle of the struggle with our brothers and sisters. You know, just educating the world, letting them know that if something let us down this road. Don't judge us, we're all human. I met a very nice young lady, how you doing? Hi, I'm Randy. Randy, okay, Randy. That's what's up. How old are you, Randy? I'm 36. She look younger than that. I told her she look younger than that. <laughs> Where are you from originally? I was born in Italy, and we from there moved to California, back to Philly, back to Italy, then to Idaho, California, and then finally back to Philly, all before I was four. Oh, wow. So you really had a lot of, like, ping pong going back and forth, huh? Yeah. You grew up with your mom and dad? Yeah, if, until, well, I had my mom and my dad, but two uh -huh. separate families. Oh, yeah. I had uh, step parents as well. Oh, my man. stepmom was the closest thing I really had to a mom, because my mom was using oxys and um, somas and wow. other narcotics and using other people to, you know, yeah. uh, sustain her addiction. And I was just kind of in the background. Yeah. So. So, what happened to your dad? My dad, um, when I was about nine, he stepped back into my life. And, um, I mean, I was, I did first grade three times because my mom wasn't making sure I was away for school, you know. And um, it was the school's last effort before they brought in Dyfus or Sweet or DHS, I'm sorry. It's all right. And, um, my dad was amazing. Like, he was highly involved in sports. So, he kind of became my coach through life. And I went from failing first grade twice, barely making it through second, about to go through third grade twice, watching my friends move on. kids to you know really relate with yeah. to becoming a straight-A student but you know the expectations were still hard and high for me because I went from anything goes to I can look at the clock at any time and know what I should be doing because of the time so what was the what was the highest grade you completed? I went to college. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. I went yeah. for visual communications and uh, multimedia oh. uh, development. That sounds like things that I'm interested in. That's, you know, I'm into media, so that's, I love that. So let's move forward. Currently out here in Kensington, what all drugs are you battling? Um, for me, it's really the routine of addiction. Like, um, actually using is just one of the outside signs of a deeper problem that's inside. Mm. So, you know, I might use fentanyl to ignore it, but sometimes I'm not using and it's being in Kensington sober. Mm. when I know I have a problem and I'm not far enough well to be here and do that, you know? Yeah. Signs like that. So and fentanyl okay. is what you're battling currently? Yes. That's the only drug? Yes. So with that, how were you introduced to fentanyl? Uh, my mom was a drug dealer, so... She sold Oxycontin, uh, morphine, methadone, benzos, you name it. 
and she started selling to my friends at school and like she would be at my school parties selling to the kids. Let's get this angle. Uh -huh. You step over here. Uh huh. And um, you know, it was more like she was my peer than a parent. Mm. And um, by doing that, I had been introduced to the oxys and not knowing what they were. I just kind of ran with it because all of a sudden I had friends that I didn't have before. Um, I had been in D.A.R.E. I had been in like every honor roll, the newspaper, art museums, wow. all sorts of stuff. Um, I was a preschool teacher and I really had aspired to do art therapy with autistic children. Oh, that was beautiful. And everything kind of went askew, kind of trying yeah. to be cool. And that's what happened to a lot of us and that's why these, these interviews are so important because a lot of us was trying to be cool and look what look the road it led us down right yeah it's not a good road and if you can go back in time and change some things in your life will you yeah what all have you lost due to your addiction um well i owned a home outright it was in my family for five generations and i didn't sell it to get high but because I was on the street getting high, um, it allowed somebody to copy the deed and get a title made and essentially steal the house from under me because, you know, I had no idea that those things could be done. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> it was hurtful, you know, it pushed me further into a really dark place. Because yeah. at that time, nobody had heard of like title lock, like stuff like that. And I could tell them what was going on and they are just like, oh yeah, she sold it to get high. And I didn't because it was taken. And I was like so embarrassed that I allowed that to happen because of my addiction. It made it hard to fight back. So, currently out here in Kensington, what's 24 hours in your life look like now? Um, well, I have an apartment, okay. and it's city funded, however, it's in a really bad part of Frankfurt. Mm. I've had someone murdered on my steps, Oh wow! Uh, people murdered on the corner because they sell crack there, and the person before me allowed people to sell drugs out the house so it was a trap house so i moved in and i was Good. like i'm not letting anybody trap out my home because i haven't had a home in so long and there's been a lot of retaliation from the block against me and trying to kind of prove that just because it has to do with drugs doesn't mean it's because of my addiction to the city has been the biggest struggle. You know, like, my apartment had been broken into three times in two weeks. They literally ransacked the whole place. Um, any sort of valuables that I have, uh -huh. I can't keep. Um, they all get stolen. Like I'll fall asleep with my phone next to my head and I'll wake up and it's gone. Man, it's hard to keep anything out here, right? Well, this is in my own apartment. People be stealing, breaking into your house, taking all your things. That's horrible. And um, my ex had told me, you know, he feared that people would be like touching me. And because I'm high, I'm not going to feel it. And right. they could essentially do whatever they want to me. And yeah. I'm not going to know. And mm -hmm. I'm vulnerable and powerless against that. Right, right. Because 
I'm using drugs. You're not to yourself, right? You're yeah. out of it. So you're unaware of what's going on. And I see that happen all the time because you know why? It's trank, trank dope. Yeah. Like xylazine puts you to sleep. It's for animals, it's not for humans. That's why everybody go to sleep out here and they get taken advantage of, you know? And it's for large animals at that. Yeah, horses right. and stuff. So how do you go about supporting your habit? Um, no through shame. Through sex work. I hear you. And then um, I also find ways to like, maybe like, I buy bundles of dope that are 65, but I get oh, an extra five free bags. And I barter with those bags for say, a pair of sneakers or food, money, whatever it is that I need. It's a hustle, right? Yeah. That's one thing about Kensington. Kensington is a hustle, you know? So how do you stay safe out here? Um, well, I mean, a lot of years of being out here, I've been out here on and off for 17 years. And um, you start to get a sense where it's like, all right, something feels funny, mm -hmm. don't question it, yeah. just assume the worst and avoid it with gotcha. that. All right. Because if you're right and you stay in the situation, you get hurt. If you're wrong and you leave, you're still okay. Right, right. Got you. So, what's the worst thing that has happened to you since you've been doing dates? Okay, uh huh. What has been your worst dating experience? raped at gunpoint um, by some random guy. He had parked between two cars so tight that I mm. couldn't get out. And, wow. um, and it was only supposed to be oral services. Mm -hmm. And when I told him that I was tired, this was taking like way too long, he pulled a gun out and pulled my pants down. Uh, he would get mad at me for crying and shaking. And he smelled of some sort of chemical. And he got up in my ear and he's like, what do you have to live for? Why are you out here? And it was just like the scariest moment yeah. of my life because Hell yeah. I have a son and that's what I told him what I have to live for. Mm. And um, how do you get away? Well, afterwards he wasn't sure if he should drop me off or keep me with him. And um, I told him I thought that he had picked me up for a role play scenario. And I'm like, I don't know why you're scared to drop me off. You wanted this role play and I did it. Why would I go to the cops, man? I'm a prostitute. I, so that's why you didn't go to the cops? You didn't report him, right? Uh, I did go to the hospital and they gave me a hard time about getting a rape kit. And um, it just felt like people think that because someone's a prostitute, they deserve these situations. But really, like the people out here, this is just a snapshot mm -hmm. of either the lowest point in our life, the darkest point, or close to that, you know? Mm -hmm. Because some people's bottom is six feet under, and some is, you know, missing an appointment or losing a job. Some are higher and some are lower than others. Right, right. And when you walk through Kensington, you see a lot of people that are broken and hurting for reasons that we can't always communicate. And that frustration gets turned inside and we end up using 
because we don't want to die, we don't want to live, mm -hmm. but by getting high, we can physically be here while emotionally, mentally, and spiritually not being here. Gotcha. All right, so we're about to wrap up the interview. So what's the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up? Um, I look for my money. Mm -hmm. I look for my drugs. <laughs> I mean, you're um, being honest. Then I get well, and then I kind of figure out what I have to do for that day. Um, I do thank God for another day. Mm -hmm. And then I also pray that maybe today will be the day that I have a moment of clarity to get out of here. Yeah, that's deep. I like that. What's the longest clean time you had? Three years. And what triggered you off your first, what what, what, what maintenance were you on to, to help you? I started with Suboxone the first time. Uh -huh. And um, I got in a relationship that I probably shouldn't have been in. So that's what triggered you? Yeah. So now you know next time when you decide to fight for your life again, what are you going to do different? Um, I mean, honestly, if I had had a sponsor, she probably would have told me not to get into that relationship. Right. So you gotta focus on you, right? The biggest thing is never thinking that you're cured or that you only need something for a little while because the drug I needed every day. So that kind of recovery I'm gonna need every day. Right. Okay, let's get off topic. What's your favorite color? I like rainbow. Oh, that's beautiful. That's yeah. unique. You like all the colors, nice. It's like that iridescent color. Right. All right. Because it kind of represents everybody. Cool. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a Cancer. Yo, shout out to the Cancers. Show your sign some love. That's what's up. What is if okay when you, when you were a little kid what do you want to become when you grow up i wanted to be a teacher oh that's beautiful what is one thing you love most about yourself um my ability to see the good in the worst of situations that's, that's, that's great that's a great quality so what animal do you like I love dogs, man. Okay. Their loyalty is amazing. So if you can be any animal, what animal would you be? Oh, I would probably want to be like, hmm, maybe like uh, a seal. Why? Because it's a whole different world that they <laughs> have. Yeah, like, right. We're obviously land creatures. So they see a whole different side of the planet that okay. we don't. Right. So daytime or nighttime, which one are you? Are you a daytime or a nighttime person? Uh, I like really late night into really early morning. Why? Um, I mean, the sunrise is beautiful and it's like, that separation from yesterday into a new day. Gotcha, that's beautiful. And if you can travel to any place or country, where would you go? I would probably go back to Italy. Wow. I would like to meet, um, my dad had a American football team that he was coaching when we were there. And I would love to meet them. That's beautiful. So, if your friends and your family were supposed to see this video, what message would you like to send to them? Uh, wow. That I love them, no matter what. And none of my situation is their fault. I don't blame them for it. I wish I had more of their support because I have a hard time communicating. I don't think they know how much they've meant to me. And their absence in my life has been glaring ever since they left. Yeah. Okay, 
So this one would be, what are your short term goals? My short term goals? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to move into a better um, location where I can feel safe. Right. Um, also trying to um, kind of make a plan with my mother to have more communication and contact with my son without coming off as combative. All right, okay. So this one would be, there are a lot of people in this world who judge people who are struggling with addiction because they cannot understand. What message do you have for the world? And well, sometimes, uh, okay. A lot of the population believes in God. You know, we can't see him. You know, sometimes we kind of feel his presence and whatnot. But addiction to me is similar to that. Like, you can't see what's wrong with me internally. Because even when I'm sober, it's still there. I just found ways to deal with it. So, it's kind of like, just because you can't see it, doesn't mean it's not real. Doesn't mean it's not... Capable of taking lives, and capable of even taking lives of the people around the ones that are using. Hey AML family, I want to tell the lovely Randy, thank you so much for opening up and giving us a piece of her story. We wish you all the best and we'll continue to follow you and you know, you're part of the family now, right? Is there anything that you're in need of that we can help you with? Uh, I desperately need clothes. Tell us what size you wear in tops and bottoms. I wear um, size five, six pants, mm -hmm. and I wear a medium top. Um, and shoes, I wear an eight and a half. Okay, so if anyone would like to drop something off for you, where can they find you? Um, that's a good question without giving out my address. Right, right. Well, uh, they, I got the P.O. box. They can send stuff to the P.O. box and I'll look for you. Where are you usually at? Where are you usually at? I'm usually up by Margaret and Orthodox. Okay. Or um, Kensington and Clearfield. Oh, okay, great. So AML family, thank you so much. Thank you, Randy, and I'll stay in touch with you. Thank Drop you. all the positive comments you got for our girl, Randy and we'll stay in touch. So AML family, remember, don't be bitter, be better. And we out there, peace out.